All right, now we are going to implement the non-ideal components and move them into our flyback converter design. So these are the different elements. We've already imported some of them. So we imported the primary switch and we imported the output capacitor. I also imported a uh, different version of the capacitor. So the simple and precise, I downloaded both just to, I'm gonna try the simple one actually this time. But first we're gonna go, we're gonna go in order. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with the primary switch, so this EPC. So let's go to Simplus. So let's start with the GAN fed. From here we are going to place the component, so 25, drain current is 2, and model is here, and we're going to be able to show the extracted waveforms here real quick, we'll extract, okay, it'll show our waveforms, but first let's place this part here. So we're going to put it here, we'll move it in there in a second. And these just show us how the parameters were extracted and shows us the piecewise linear approximation of the nonlinear waveforms. So we can just close those just for additional information. If you don't want to see that, you can just uncheck the box when you open this. Now let's delete this switch and we're going to move this into here. Okay, so now everything is connected and we want to drive our gate. So we don't need this part anymore. We're going to just drive directly from ground. So we can put our value here and we can get rid of some of these. All right, so now we have this gate being driven. Our pop trigger is still on the gate signal because that's our nice clean signal. We have our EPC component here. Just as a troubleshooting uh, recommendation, whenever you add one component, you have a working system, you change one component, I just recommend running it just to make sure that when you change that one component, everything's still working properly. So let's go to simulator, choose analysis, and we're gonna do, we're gonna do transient just because we want to make sure that the, everything's looking okay. So we can just put this to one millisecond. Don't need much time here. All right, and we're gonna run this. Okay, looks like it runs really quickly and we're still getting switching happening here. So that looks great. All right, so that looks good. Our EBC component is now installed. And now let's move to this uh, secondary diode, so on the secondary side here. All right, so we want to go into this diode. We didn't have a component that was already made, so we're gonna just do the user-defined one. All right, let's just put a name here, and let's put in the values here. So the forward voltage, now we just have to go to the data sheet because we don't necessarily have uh, everything uh, already made for us. So we just have to look at the data sheet, look at the forward voltage. We need to go to the electrical characteristics. Down here it is, our forward voltage. We're only at about two, uh, less than two amps here, so we'll just use this lower one. So we'll do 0 0.75 as our typical forward voltage. Okay, there we go. Uh, forward resistance, I'm actually just gonna leave that as it is. It takes a little bit more to calculate that. Off resistance, I'm also just gonna leave that. I, we are going to look at the output capacitance because that is should be in this data sheet. So let's look for that. Here, the total capacitance here. Um, this is based on reverse voltage. It's near zero, so it's about 500. I think I saw 520 somewhere in the data sheet, so we're going to use 520 for the total capacitance there. So we're going to go 520 picofarads. All right. There it is. We rerun the same analysis. We are getting a, a little bit of a different waveform here, um, but our, it looks like our output is going okay. We're just kind of getting some ugliness in the other transients, but our output is looking okay. Let's add the magnetizing inductance first. Sorry, the uh, update the transformer here, the coupled inductor. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the nine idealities on the outside. 
I'll note you can use uh, different levels, a different component, but for this one, um, I'm just going to model them as separate components. So we're going to add a lossy inductor. There it is, lossy inductor uh, simple. I'm going to put that here. This is going to act as our leakage inductance. All right, so we just need our inductance, and then we can put our series resistance in here too. So let's go back to our design. I added some more details here about the design. We have, this is already set. Now we have one nano Henry of leakage and then 10 uh, milli ohms uh, on the primary side of resistance. So let's add that one nano. And these are kind of made up numbers. Ideally you would measure them, but sometimes we're just gonna use something that approximately works. So here's our series resistance and our inductance and press okay there. And we also want to add some series resistance on the secondary side. So we can just add a resistor here. So we can press R and then F5 to rotate that. We're going to put it here really close. Definitely not going to be 1K. Double click that. Let's make that 100, or sorry, 10 milli ohm. All right, so this now models a slightly more accurate version of the coupled inductor. Now we can put in our capacitor, so let's go to place. And we're going to use the simple one. I think it simulates faster. And we're going to replace this one. And actually we're going to put two in parallel because they're 4.7. So copy this, put that in there, and then we'll just connect this one also. All right, so connect this in parallel. And let's check that this is going to run. Okay, notice that it does take a little bit longer and we're getting a little bit of noise. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, and we're getting all this pretty ugly noise. So that's not good, <laughs> obviously, but we are getting switching a switching system. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to switch to pop and then we're going to see if we can figure out the problem here. So we are going to close these and I'm going to now change it to pop. So pop and in the pop, the settings are the same. I'm actually going to change it to, let's go three number of cycles because in the flyback we're looking at, we want to look at this high frequency ringing. So we want to zoom in a little bit more. So we'll do three cycles here to output and we can press run. All right, so this is our primary and secondary current. There's a lot of noise here, but the real problem looks like it's over here. So we're getting this huge spike and that's not likely to be seen in the actual system. So there must be something that is missing in our simulation in the way that we're modeling our system. One thing that I've discovered is that when we look at this EPC part, um, so this is how we, we extracted the parameters. So when we did this, we extracted them, but now actually we want to do, look at the user defined. So they extract over to here and there's no output capacitance, but in a flyback converter, the output capacitance is important. So if we go back to the data sheet of our EPC, I've already downloaded this data sheet. We can go to this parameter and find the output capacitance here is we're going to just do the typical 295 picofarads. So let's add that to our model and see if that makes a difference. 295, 295 picofarads. Okay. Then we're just going to press okay here. All right. And now we're going to rerun again and we're going to run schematic. Let's see. Looks like this has gone, it's still pretty high, but it's manageable. At least it's not over going anywhere. And now you can see these spikes have actually disappeared. So if we zoom in, let's try to zoom in here. We can see this is dotted, meaning it was a previous one, but now we're actually getting this ringing here. And that's because we added this capacitance. So even if you download the component from the manufacturer, you do want to check and make sure that it's meeting what you're expecting. So this is, a, I think, particularly challenging one because you have a lot of resonance uh, happening here. So you do need to make sure that you are modeling everything enough so that you can see 
the level of detail that you want. So now we can go back, let's go back to a full view here and we can just simulate this one more time. You gotta click on here and then run schematic and that'll zoom in on this point. So this was the output voltage. You can see it's not quite as bad. One last thing, actually, it's important to see the voltage over the switch, right? To see if that we're, if we're over voltaging that or not. So I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and we're gonna add uh, the switch here as a label, a probe, and we're gonna keep it on the same graph because then we can see all the voltages on the same scale. All right, so let's run that. Here is the switching node voltage. So you can see it is definitely going up and ringing, but it's not spiking to an absurdly high value based on our, our model here. So this can give you a little bit, um, some good information about how the waveforms are operating and the values that we expect to see with the level of modeling that we have. And here you can see, although we would like to be at 30, it's a little bit below, if we want to then up that. Of course, this is all open loop, so we're not doing closed loop at this point, but I just want to show the individual tools. Okay, we can see that. That did boost that up just a little bit. So if you're just trying to see um, the kind of non-ideal operation, what we're going to be expecting, we can model the different components here and we are able to probe all of our basic components and look at our output voltage, our different voltages on the primary side and secondary side, and primary and secondary current. We're using pop trigger to jump to steady state so we can see what we want after it's reached steady state. If we want to look at startup or other transients, we can use the uh, transient mode in our simulator. We Put a lot of non-idealities using sometimes the um, pre-made spice component and then sometimes just filling in like we did for this diode here. So this would give you a much better picture of your flyback converter, how it's going to operate, and then you can do further analysis on this and also develop your controller if you're going to develop a control. So from here you have many different things that you can do in Simplest, but we'll stop here for this part.